playing a warrior in Morrowind isn't easy. In fact, playing Morrowind in general isn't very easy, especially if you're a new player. So today, I'm gonna teach you how to set your character up to not only learn the ways of the blade, but also how to collect some key items that will set you up for early success and enable you to remind everyone why people in the 80s thought this was what peak performance looked like. You were dreaming. What's your name? What's my name, Jeb? Well, that is a fantastic question because as always, you have to start with an incredibly powerful, non-cliched, totally original name. Uh, so I will go with Rambu, right? Totally original. Other names, you know, acceptable for warriors, uh, keeping uniqueness in mind. Conant, Daximus, Meximus, Meridius. John McClone, I mean, ju just to name a couple, right? Just to name a couple. So when we're talking about creating a warrior, there's really only two classes that particularly stand out. And these are gonna be our Nord and our Red Guard. Now let's start with the Nord. If we take a look here, first at the specials, your Nord is immediately gonna appear to be more of your defensive-minded, tank-based race. If you wanna go for like heavy armor, you know, powerhouse of just built of iron and steel, Something, somebody that just cannot be run over, Nord is going to be your character. Right off the bat, we have an immunity to Frost 100%. So if you plan on going to Solstheim, plan on doing the Blood Moon DLC, a lot of enemies up there have Frost damage. So they're going to be particularly strong in that region of the map. Additionally, they have a 50% resistance to Shock, which is going to be great. Storm Atronachs, very strong enemies in the game, especially in the later game when they start spawning naturally in the world. They also have Woad, which, like the Breton class, they have an innate shield built in, which honestly is kind of funny because the Bretons actually have a slightly higher shield uh, than the Nords, which is a little odd, seeing as Nords obviously more of a tank-focused class. And then beneath Woad here, we have Thunderfist, which is going to be frost damage, 25 points on touch. So actually a pretty strong spell in the early game. There are not a lot of creatures out there that have uh, resistance to frost besides, you know, fighting other Nord NPCs themselves. Let's move over here and take a look at the skill bonuses, and you'll see that our Nord is obviously going to be more geared towards the axe and blunt weapon. Um, I, I would probably recommend axe. They're a little easier to get early in the game to have like really strong axes, whereas really strong blunt weapons typically come from either, you know, quests or, or exploits. Uh, just thinking about, you know, Mace Malag Ball, thinking about Scourge uh, and Tell Fear from DBF Fear. And then Spear is decent, but not a weapon type I typically recommend unless you're specifically trying to be at that at that long reach. There's just not as many of them in the game. You don't have as many options to choose from when you're specking your character. Additionally, we have two boosts here, one to heavy armor, one to medium armor, slightly more to medium armor, but five, five uh, skill points, you know, we're kind of splitting hairs here. With the Nord out of the way, now let's move on down to the Red Guard. And where the Nord, as I mentioned, is more of our tank, the Red Guard is much more of our offensive focused master swordsman. And this is the class that I actually used in my adventures with Aragorn Let's Play uh, back in the day on this channel. If you're interested in things like that, you know, just scroll through the video history over there. But let's start with the specials. We have uh, resist disease of 75%. Again, as I said in my last video on how to mage, this, this just isn't very exciting. There's tons of cure disease potions in the game. So common diseases are more of a nuisance than a serious detriment. We do have resist poison, which is somewhat nice. There are traps in Morrowind that work with poison and you know, getting getting poisoned over time from a magic user, although not the most common spells, certainly some of the most deadly. So that's kind of nice to have, but the real selling point on a red guard here is probably the most overpowered racial ability in the game, bar none, bar none. Let's take a look. To find out why we have fortify agility 50 points 60 seconds fortify strength 50 points fortify speed 50 points fortify endurance 50 points fortify health 25 points all for 60 seconds and this is with no downside no negatives you get to use it once a day and of course you can just rest 24 hours to get it back all the time so what is this really doing well it's increasing our chance to hit with raising our agility it's increasing the damage we're doing and carry weight with our strength it's increasing our ability to move and kite around in combat with the increase to the speed it's increasing our fatigue pool with our increase to endurance and of course restoring and increasing our health pool 25 points with our fortify health so all in all this is just everything a warrior character wants in a single buff if you've never played with adrenaline rush before i really cannot overstate how overpowered it feels especially in the early game now let's move over to the skill bonuses here 
We have a lot of fives and 115. So we have Athletics 5, Axe 5, Blunt Weapon 5, Heavy Armor 5, Medium Armor 5, Short Blade 5. But the real star of the show here is Long Blade 15. And 15 is the highest skill bonus that you can get from simply picking a class in Morrowind. So immediately looking at a Red Guard, if you want a Master Swordsman, if you want to emulate you know, Aragorn or Inuyasha, because there's katanas in the game. I mean, what, whatever your favorite uh, fan of swordsman is, this is your class to do it. Now, I'm sure some folks watching this video are going to be like, Coffee, you did a warrior playthrough as an orc. Why are you not talking about orcs? And I'll tell you why I'm not talking about orcs. They're not a bad choice. Nords and Red Guards just simply come one cut above them. First, let's look down here at our specials. You'll notice that immediately off the bat, they don't get a ton. They only get a Resist to Magicka and then an ability called Berserk. The real drawback here is Berserk. And as you can see, it's kind of just a really bad Adrenaline Rush. We have Fortify Health, 20 points, 60 seconds. Fortify Fatigue, 260 seconds. And then we have Fortify Attack, 100 points for 16 seconds. But we do have Drain Attribute, Agility, 100 points for 60 seconds on Self. What this means is you're going to be really easy to knock down in combat. Your agility is what actually keeps your character from getting staggered. So if you knock your agility down 100 points, you're super susceptible to getting knocked over in combat. And then let's look at the skills over here. Very defensive focus with only a boost to axe, everything else relating to armor. But I will say if you want to tank and focus on being that kind of immovable object playstyle, the immunity to frost and the resist shock plus woad that the Nord has in their special abilities is going to give you a lot more mileage. So with that being said, uh, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and pick a Nord because, you know, I think I think they're pretty fun. Thunderfist is great, and I like the way that this default guy looks with those face tats. Pretty brutal. Great. I'm sure you'll fit right in. I'm sure you'll fit right in. Um, got a lot of face tats? Well, I, I guess this is kind of a prison colony. I mean, that's what they're doing with me. Or maybe mumble rap is still like top tier and pop culture in Marlin. All right, the second step here to creating our warrior is obviously creating a custom class. And we're going to go with the Terminator. You know, our, we're Rambu, so we got half of the action movie stars covered. Now we'll go over here to Schwarzenegger land and uh, channel him for our, our Terminator title here. So obviously, specialization you're going to want to pick is combat. Just going to give a boost to the stats that you can see here in the list. And then you're going to want to pick your favorite attributes as strength and endurance now endurance is slightly up for debate you could say that agility is slightly better but to me endurance just edges out agility because of this second point here and that it raises the health that you gain per level so you want as high an endurance as possible if you're trying to min max your health pool because the higher it is early that means the more you health gain per level up every single time for for your whole playthrough so if you start with a higher endurance, once you hit max level, your health pool is going to be way higher than it was if you had a lower endurance you started. And that's why, to me, endurance just edges it out. Because if you want to be tank, heavy armor character, you want to be a true warrior and terminator, you know, massive pecs, got to have a large health pool to do that. I think juicy pecs and large health pools are directly correlated with each other. That's all I'm saying. So for me, you got to go endurance, although there is a relevant argument for picking agility. All right, so moving on to the major skills, I'm gonna pick Axe, you know, going in on that that 10 boost that we get from being the Nord. And also, Axes are just freaking cool. I don't know if any of y'all have seen Lord of the Rings, but Gimli, best, best character. All right, so moving on, I'm gonna pick one armor skill that I wanna focus on. I'm gonna go medium armor. And then here's where you can kind of get creative if you want. I recommend taking Athletics as a major skill. This is gonna let you move a little faster. It's gonna let your fatigue decrease slower when running. And then additionally, I like to take Speechcraft when I'm playing a warrior because don't get lost in the first impression when you see Speechcraft here. This does not mean diplomacy, right? We're not being diplomatic. Speechcraft in Morrowind also affects your ability to taunt and to intimidate, which are incredibly warrior things to do. I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen Conan, but that, that guy, he does a whole lot of intimidation and taunting. It's best in life. Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, to hear the lamentation of the women. And there's a great exploit that you can do in Morrowind where if you're good enough at speechcraft, you have a high enough personality, then you can actually taunt NPCs into attacking you and you can then kill them and take their loot for no penalty. Definitely sounds like a pretty barbarian thing to do. And then finally here, I'm actually gonna take Marksman 
because sticking to the warrior theme, we don't want to depend on magic for our ranged damage. We do want to have the ability to land a couple shots from far away and engage or leash out certain enemies that we want to attack, or honestly just freaking deal with the cliff racers that get stuck up in the sky and just leave the combat music running the whole time. Now moving on to the minor skills, this is when a lot of customization can come in. It depends on, again, what you think a warrior is. I recommend taking restoration or alchemy so you can at least prop up that massive health pool so you can make potions or heal yourself. Additionally, block if you're gonna be using sword and sealed and not two-handed. You could take one more other weapon type here as well if you want to switch around and try different things, but just keep in mind that when you get to the late game, in order to level effectively get those last couple levels, since uh, each level in Morrowind is 10 levels of any major or minor skill, you are gonna have to switch weapons or kind of hybridly uh, use two at the same time, using 170% of the time, 130% of the time. You, you will actually have to level that skill in order to level up, so just keep that in mind. Alternatively here, you could take Mercantile, good on any character. Security, since we're not gonna be using any open spells because we're a warrior type character. Not a spell blade, that'll be coming in a, in a different video. And then finally, something like acrobatics, so you can be more nimble when you're moving around or fighting groups of enemies. All right, so there you have it, the class Terminator. And now let's move on to the birth signs. Now for the birth sign here, there's one clear standout option. Again, going off my earlier point about endurance is the lady. Let's look at the abilities. So first we have Fortify Personality 25 points. And now this is gonna be a big deal because this is going to play in with the speech craft that we took when creating our custom class. It's gonna make it easier to intimidate and taunt folks. And then additionally at the bottom here, we have Fortify Endurance 25 points, which is going to again, raise our maximum health pool and then raise the health that we gain at every single level. So I'm gonna go with the lady. The warrior is kind of, eh, kind of basic, not very exciting, very beige choice. The lady's the way to go. So as you can see here, Rambu, the Nord Terminator, born under the sign of the lady, and where I'd like to really direct your attention to is endurance of 85, right at the start. This is gonna give us a massive health pool, massive fatigue pool, and then it's also gonna prop us up to be incredibly tanky and get an incredibly high health bonus every time we level. All right, so first things first, before even heading to RLAs and pawning off our platter, what we're gonna wanna do is come over here to the lighthouse and grab an actually great starting item, uh, especially if we are playing the Nord. So what you're gonna wanna do is come over here, see that little stump over there, jump right on top of it, and then boom, iron shard ax, chop one to 32, one to 24, one three, with zero to seven points damage on touch. A great item to start out with. Let's actually go and test it out here on this mud crab. Let's see what we got. Oh, come on. There we go. I mean, I hit it with a thrust, which is one to three points of damage and almost one shot it. So pretty, pretty good, pretty good item to start with. All right, now that we've got our shard axe, we're gonna go head over to RLA's and pawn off a bunch of gold because we are going to need a nice little gold reserve for something later on, but I'll explain that in a minute. All right, buddy. Open wide, RLA. I heard you were furnishing a new home. Again, for the thousandth time. God, you must be getting sick of this. <laughs> 432 gold. There's that mercantile and speechcraft coming in. I will take that. Thank you very much, RLA. Now that we've passed off uh, the old kitchenware to RLA, we're going to head over to Balmora. And then once in Balmora, we are gonna head over yonder to the Eastern Guard Tower. And now, if you've played Morrowind for a while, you probably know what I'm going after. But if not, this is going to be a great starting item if you took the Red Guard as your race. So we're gonna head in, head up the stairs here. Oh man, look at that, <laughs> man, the guards are kitted out. I forgot they had all this, all this firepower laying around. All right, so the item that we're coming here for is actually sitting right here. This is the Sword of White Woe, but we need to get the Halalu guard out of the way um, in order to grab it. So he can see us. Let's uh, go over here, wide out in the open, but with just enough distance so I can run away. Let me grab that. Crimes reported. He's chasing us. I let him downstairs. Now I'm going to pay the gold, and then we need to hurry right quick back, 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 back. Grab it. And then boom, he is none the wiser. <laughs> oh, would you look at that sort of right? Whoa. 
Doesn't even miss it. We can flash it in front of him. Doesn't care. There you have it. Sword of White Woe. 17,000 gold. Drain health 1 to 10 points for 30 seconds on hit. So nice little damage over time enchantment on it. If you're playing a red guard, highly recommend picking this up pretty much as soon as you start. There's no reason not to. All right, so there we have a great starting weapon for our Nord and our red guard. Now let's figure out what to do about some armor. And to sort out a great, easy way to get some medium armor, we're going to head over to the Mage's Guild. And then we are going to travel to Caldera and visit Gorak Manor, but surprisingly not talk to the Creeper. I'm listening. I'm listening as well. You know... <laughs> <laughs> you know, that guy, this guy kind of looks like a paintbrush, doesn't he? I don't know why that just <laughs> randomly Good popped day. in my head. Um, oh, ig ignore that guy. Old Eric the Red over there is uh, actually foreshadowing for a future Twitch stream that's coming up and video. So be on the lookout for those. Now, once we get into Gorak Manor, we're actually going to head up to the top Beep. floor. And then next to Duma Grolag is going to be a mostly full set of orcish armor there you go let's take a look here orcish armor is actually some of the best medium armor that you can get early on in the game so getting almost a full set here is incredibly useful and another thing that's awesome about uh you know stealing the old things over here at gorak manor is for some reason the locals don't seem to care at all for these orzimers so stealing from here or even murdering anyone in this building is actually not considered a crime so do with that information uh, what you will. All right, so now we have the Sword of White Woe. We have some medium armor. And we have a nice frost axe to start out with our Nord. Uh, but one thing is missing. We need something with a badass constant effect. So what we're going to do first is go to Vivek. And then we're going to hop on the boats and sail our way up to Narmok. Yes. Now that we've arrived in Narmok, we need to head up northwest until we reach Cartag Point. Well, not exactly Cartag Point, but an island just off the coast of Cartag Point. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> no, it was just a matter of time. <laughs> the first cliff racer. I'm surprised it took us this long to find it, to be honest. There was one in Balmora, but the guard was doing us a solid in attacking it, thankfully. All right, there we go. But one down. Countless, countless thousands to go. <sighs> Oh my god, not another one, see? <laughs> I spoke it into existence, I should have kept my mouth shut. Oh god, you live and learn, folks. I need I need to remember not to thrust. This thing does not have very good stats for that. Let's look at it again. Yeah, one to three. Whew. Not the best. Alright, now we're at Kartag Point here. Uh, we can actually just head right across this little straight and that right there is the door to Ilanibi, where the best gauntlets in the entire game reside. Oh, come on, slaughterfish. Oh, God, two babies. Whatever will we do? There's a formula shortage, don't you know? Stop having kids. <laughs> also, though, how do you run out of baby formula? Like, let's be real. Come on. Come on, people. All right, here we go. Ilanibi, Carcass of the Saint. And it's actually a pretty, uh, pretty lengthy little dungeon here. And one that you would be coming in for the main quest later on. So if you're trying to save that for yourself, uh, then just kind of ignore this part of the build. But if not, this doesn't disrupt the main quest in any way. Uh, you'll simply just be getting uh, a fantastic item early. Wow, there is nobody here. Look at that. I just walked through. I'm walking through this whole first area. I haven't seen a single person. Okay, this is really ominous. I wonder if this place is empty if you haven't advanced the main quest at the start. Oh, well, that makes this even easier then. Oh, nope. Okay. Here's one guy. We have no fatigue. So hopefully this goes well. Look at that damage. Let's go. Alright, I contracted with her. Not a big deal. Ah, we'll deal with that. Pop a little ibuprofen. You know, shake it off. It'll be fine. Moving into Morak's spine here. Basically, all you want to do is keep moving in deeper as the gauntlets are in the last area. Oop, another dreamer here. Two hitting folks. Not even fair. Oh, got a crew of them. There we go, axe to 46. 
They are doing no damage. Look at this. Sorry, boys. A Nord in medium armor is too strong in the early game. Well, when you have 85 endurance, I mean, what are they going to do? Oh, Dead Adventure. What do you have? Probe and a lockpick. Exciting guy. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is to the Blackened Heart. Sounds like an awesome death metal album. I've probably listened to the Blackened Heart a couple times. <laughs> Gonna head up into the ominously lit passageway. And then here we are in the soul's rattle. And this is where we'll find our gauntlets. Look left, look right. Nothing over here, nothing over there. Can't rest because there's enemies nearby. Give it a couple seconds to get some fatigue. If I remember correctly, I think there's uh, one of the main enemies down here. A Dagoth, I believe. Oh, nope, just a couple dreamers. Ow. Shouldn't they be suscept super susceptible to frost because they're naked? <laughs> Shouldn't cold be more effective against them? All right, there we go. Get the local naturalists out of here. All right, and then we need to come in here. Go to the left. You'll see this little metal trough with a bunch of uh, actually pretty, pretty decent scrolls and other loot. And then sure enough, fists of Radigolf with a joint armor rating of 90. We're getting 45 points from each as well as constant effect, fortify agility 20 points from the left, and fortify strength 20 points from the right. So let's go ahead and throw these on. As you can see, our strength is now at 70, and our agility is now at 50. So we're going to be dealing a lot more damage, and we're also going to be landing a lot more hits. So if you're running heavy armor, really any armor, it's worth having these on. And while we're here, you know, let's let's check some of the other items here. We got uh, we got glass ar glass boots for eight thousand. Oh, we got a sixth house amulet, two thousand gold. Not too bad. And I guess if you come here off of the main quest, there's only dreamers. It seems like they don't actually spawn any of the really high level enemies. And it looks like Dagoth Garry's is not here yet. So if you want some high level items really, really easily, just come here at level one like I did just now, and you'll walk out with literally the best gauntlets in the game. Not too bad of a time. All right, so there you have it. Everything you need to get started as a warrior in Morrowind. You have ridiculously high int now. You have ridiculously high strength. And those are both the two stats that are going to drive everything that a warrior is supposed to be good at. You also have some awesome enchanted weapons if you're using either axe or a long blade. And you have a mix of medium and heavy armor to get you started off on whichever build path you would like to go. Now, additionally, if you're a heavy armor player, I recommend you check out one of my other star guide videos in game in 15 minutes as that shows us raiding the Raider and Vault and they do in fact have most of an ebony armor set in there. I just didn't want to duplicate that here in this video in case folks had already seen it. But there you go, your character's made, you got a good name, couple incredible items, and you're off kicking and screaming. As you saw, this is an incredibly tanky build, an incredible way to start off on the path to badassery. So thank you so much for watching, be sure to subscribe down there and I will catch you on the next one.